All right, today we're here at Lindley, and we're going to go over grounds and building exterior. First of all, we're going to talk about gas cabinets. This is the proper gas cabinet that needs to be uh, used to store gas in the proper containers, which are labeled UL safety containers. You will also have a two-cycle one that should be labeled two-cycle. Gas is a work order. So we do not mix gas and we put in that work order and they should come out, mix it and put it in the proper container for us. Like again, these are UL safe uh, containers and that's what our gas should be properly stored in. So we're done with the gas, we're going to come over here and we're going to talk about gas caps a little bit. Uh, you should take a look at your gas cap and it'll tell you what it needs to be put into it. A single gas tank usually or usually it's unleaded. It's going to say unleaded with a single gas tank. If it's a mix it's going to have a gas tank and an oil droplet next to it and tell you if it's 40 to 1, 50 to 1 on the cap. So you know that's a two cycle mix. Some in some cases this cap could be yellow or red and that could be diesel. Uh, check before you actually put any kind of diesel or gas into something that has a red or yellow cap. What we're going to do is we're going to go talk about the mower here and the safety, some of the safety issues. When, when using this mower, you should, first of all, when starting it, you should, when it's running, you should uh, make sure that it's not, sounds bad, it's not vibrating over exaggerating the vibrating and everything make sure that it's running properly because if there's a problem do not use it you could have you can get injured pretty badly with uh, something like this so the first thing you want to do is check your engine oil pull that out got a dipstick it'll tell you on the grid where it needs to be at if necessary and then put in the proper type of gas this is going to be, and this is what it says here, unleaded gas only. We'll put unleaded gas in it. We'll start it up. If, when, uh, you'll, you'll start it up and you'll mow. Uh, you should probably wear the right safety shoes. Maybe uh, safety goggles, gloves if, you, if necessary. Uh, when you're out mowing, make sure that this thing sounds right. The wheels are connected. Everything sounds good while you're listening to the, how things are running. Uh, as you're mowing outside, if kids come in or around the situation, stop mowing. You don't want this to throw something out and hit a kid. So when mowing, be aware of your surroundings and what's going on. Okay, from uh, this lawn mower, we're going to go to a nice spreader. Ice melt spreader here. And every year, this ice melt spreader, at the end of the year, needs to be emptied and hosed down, cleaned up. We do have a, right here, a, what it is, is a, how much you're, you're putting down to adjust. So, you don't want to put too much down, you don't want to put too less down. Find a happy medium, because the ice melt does come out of your warehouse uh, supply list. So, you're paying for this stuff. So, you don't want to put too much, but you don't want to put too less. Uh, when you put it in, you'll open it up, you'll spread it. I mean, it's pretty normal normal thing here but when you're done spreading ice melt on your sidewalks your part or maybe a, a parking lot spot or maybe a playground spot put it down in your log we need it put into your log with month year and date month year and date has to be all in there and we save those ice melt logs for at least three years we're gonna probably save them longer than that but log it. Every time you put ice melt down, log it. So, we're done out in here for right now. We're going to come out here. We're going to talk about uh, graffiti a little bit. And at one point we had graffiti on this wall. You can kind of see where it was. So, graffiti is a work order and a call in. So you want to work order this and call it in as soon as possible. If it's vulgar, uh, you may be able to cover it up with something. Uh, but 
you really need to put a work order in and get that uh, the, those guys to come out here and slam sandblast it off. If it's gang related, sometimes they'll want to come out and take pictures of it, so you may have to cover it up. So we go from there to lighting, and th what we have right here is a wall pack. That's a wall pack lighting. So when you want to put in a work order for something like this, you can say, "Hey, I have a wall pack by door number one E." that is out and they'll come out and change it for you if you cannot use a ladder to get to this this one she could get a ladder to it and she would be able to change it there's other wall packs that will not be able to change so that is a work order tell them you have a wall pack out as we look over here you'll see a bunch of path lights going down the driveway the reason why they're called path lights they are they are lighting up a path. So those are path lights. You are not going to change those. You will be able to put in a work order and tell them, hey, I have a path light in the south driveway that is out that needs to be replaced. As you can come over a little bit, you can see that you got two large parking lot lights over here and towards the back. Now, a parking lot light, obviously, lights up a parking lot. So you can tell them, hey, the south parking lot light is out. They will know what, to, what they'll need to bring out bulb-wise. So we go from there to talking about paint, painting um, your uh, parking lots. Now parking lots will need to be restriped or the uh, handicap blue area needs to be restriped. You need to visually take a look at that while you're walking through your parking lots, picking up trash. Maybe there's a, par a pothole that needs to be filled. These are all work orders. They have somebody come out, paint new stripes if needed, fill in potholes, cracks, whatever, anything that can uh, uh, have a hazard in the parking lot. These are work orders. But while you're picking up trash a couple of times a week, you need to be investigating this stuff while you're walking around. So we come up to the edge here, and you'll notice we have uneven sidewalk or uh, a, a drop off on the sidewalk, and it's painted. You'll need to keep make sure that these stay painted and you know well illuminated for everybody to see, so that you know somebody doesn't drop off the side of it and hurt themselves because there's a step. All steps should be painted with a yellow stripe to uh, avoid any kind of injury. As you can see down here in the bus lane, there's two stripes. You got the curb one, and then you got the yellow stripe that the kids are supposed to stand behind while the buses are pulling in. You gotta make sure that those things are staying well, you know, well uh, painted and everything so that we don't have a problem. And again, if we have uneven pavement, an uneven sidewalk that we may have to identify, again, you, want, you might want to paint that. So as you can see, where we're walking over towards the, the uh, playground, we have some signage up here on the side of the, uh, the building, playground rules and the notice. Those are the things that we need to uh, make sure that things are staying uh, where they need to be. We're talking handicap signs, no skateboard signs, no idling signs. Uh, what else? We got a no parking fire lane sign here. That we got a one way signs. We got to make sure that these are all visual to everybody and somebody hasn't stole them or they haven't been knocked down or anything like that. As we go on through, I was uh, missed a little something on the uh, the parking lot manhole covers. Make sure that they're covered. A lot of times, some of these things come up missing, and uh, we need to uh, take care of those things. Make sure that the manhole cover has. If it's missing, we can put pylons around it so a car doesn't go into it. As you can see, this is a path light with a sign on it. No parking. All right. So this uh, make sure that you know we. The light is lit, the no parking sign's still there. This is stuff that we do while we're walking around picking up trash. 
Now we're coming over to the playground. We got a playground inspection. What you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure that the fence and everything is uh, put together right and we don't have anything that anybody, any kids can hurt themselves on. You see that we have a blue bench over here also. We want to make sure that that blue bench is, people can sit on it and not hurt themselves. And you got the playground equipment over here. You want to walk through that playground and make sure that we don't have objects that can hurt kids or they can uh, hurt themselves on bars missing or bar, um, bolts loose or anything like that. These are all work orders. All work order here. You put in there, you may have to rope it off so that kids do not hurt themselves or put you know, tape, hazard tape up. Tell the principal what's going on that you put in a working order for it and somebody's gonna come out and take care of it. But all we do is just visually walk through and make sure since bench, we're talking playground equipment is safe for the children. Here we have a pad. A lot of the, the playgrounds have mulch. So we also want to make sure that we have a nice level of cushion of mulch in there too. So we put in work orders to have people come out and put that stuff down. The last thing I got is flag etiquette. Uh, make sure you check your book, your reference book for flag etiquette. Uh, make sure you don't, when you're bringing that, that flag down, it doesn't touch the ground. Uh, that's all we have right now on part one of building exteriors and grounds. We'll have part two uh, on mowers and paint sprayers. We'll talk to you later.